My name is Kobna Tenshaini Boyd. Many thanks for joining us here on News Desk. Our first story, a new special advisor to the Secretary General, Professor Jeffrey Sack, has charged the Electoral Commission to ensure that stakeholders in the upcoming elections have trust in the electoral role before the country goes to the polls. Professor Jeffrey Sack, who is also the director of the Earth Institute at Columbia University, said a peaceful election is crucial if Ghana is to retain the investors currently in the country and also attract new businesses. He made these observations at a public lecture on sustainable development and economic growth in, Af in Africa here in Accra. Ghana's electoral commission and the electoral role have become dominant topics for discussion in the past few months. Pressure groups like the Let My Vote Count Alliance hit the streets of some regional capitals to demand the commission compiles a new register for the 2016 polls. On June 23 this year, in the Abu Ramadan versus Electoral Commission of Ghana, the Supreme Court ordered the Electoral Commission to submit in writing the full list of persons who registered with the NHIS cards. The Electoral Commission was swift to issue a statement indicating its willingness to comply with the Supreme Court's ruling. The back and forth, according to analysts, has heightened the political tensions in the country in the full glare of the international community. Speaking at a public lecture in Accra, UN Special Advisor to the UN Secretary General, Professor Jeffrey Sachs, said, Peaceful election is crucial if Ghana is to keep current investors in the country and also attract new businesses. He believes the key to peaceful elections is to satisfy all parties. You've got a critical election coming up. Also with the difficulties of the, the names on the uh, electoral rolls. It's vital that there be trust in the country by the time the election take place. This is really important because without it, not only nothing works, but also I can tell you economics doesn't work either because you won't get the investment and the development that's needed. Right, uh, we'll be dealing with some other issues relating to elections, but let's talk about something that happened yesterday. It has to do with the IEA evening encounters, and uh, we do know that yesterday was the turn of the flag bearer of the Convention People's Party, uh, Mr. Ivo Greenstreet, who has coughed at the New Patriotic Party's campaign message of establishing factories in all districts across the country. Now, taking his turn at the IEA debate yesterday, Mr. Greenstreet posited the building of district factories has been captured in the CPP's manifesto since time immemorial, tracing it to Kwame Nkrumah's era. He therefore sees it laughable that the NPP is projecting this agenda as their own. Paul, MPP come here to give you a list of district industries they intend to establish. Let me remind you that the CPP has done this before. All the factories were largely sold or given away or abandoned by the PNDC, NDC and the MPP. <laughs> Steelworks in Tema and Takradi, atomic energy in Kwabanya, an industrial machine workshop in Tema, the Akosombo Dam, cement factory in Tema, coconut fiber and ceramic processing near Salt Pond, rattan or cane or basket weaving and bamboo processing in Eastern Region, rubber plantation and gold refinery in Western Region, Pwanrugu tomato factory as well as Wanrugu meat factory in Bolgatanga, a cotton factory in Tamale, and a jute and shoe factory in Kumasi. The list was endless, but successive governments Successive governments have systematically destroyed these fortunes, do not believe in self-determination, and have made us beggars. By campaign chairman of the New Patriotic Party, Mr. Peter McMeno, describes the attack by Mr. Ivor Greenstreet as an unfair castigation, insisting the concept of district factories has been part of the NPP's agenda since 2007. 
and then you see about how Mr. Ivor Green says you destroyed some of these factories and now the MPP now the MPP is now coming back to say you establish a factory in every district. You feel that criticism uh, lacks merit? Why so? Very well because uh, maybe he hasn't done his research well. The one district one factory is captured in NPP's budget of 2007 and we didn't say we we're going to use state we said we're going to help private sector. We are a private sector driven political party. We are a, port, a, a private sector uh, driven political party. What we said, and if you can look at, I think, 4,378 paragraph of 2007 budget, you will see that we said we're going to assist and help the private sector to partner them to set up one industry at each district which we labeled it district industrialization program dip is in the budget so the ndc came and abandoned that project nana kufadu says i am going to revive it and make it shine so that we can find jobs <laughs> what is the problem yeah, with that his point is that both the mpp and the ndc at, at different points you were in government, you... you but the CPP you, has been in power, they have been in power, wasn't Kwame Nkrumah in power? Wasn't Kwame Nkrumah... These industries were functioning at the time that Nkrumah was in power. The PNDC, NDC, NPP took over, and now we've seen that these industries have been run down. In establishing them throughout the country, wouldn't it be destroyed or not sustained? I think lumping NPP on the same radio with... NDC is quite unfair because when we came to power in 2001, everybody knows where we were. We had to go the hippie way to salvage the economy, introduce new ways and ideas to the extent that interest rate went considerably down, inflation went down, there were jobs, there were the banks chasing private sector to acquire loans at lower interest rate because the government himself detached itself from loans. I think we did well, but like I said earlier, governance is a continuous process. If you like that, if you like that, then you, you, you think so, Clay, the world must come to an end. So what I'm saying, accusations? Oh, very well, very well. I think that he must look at NDC and tell them in the face that this election it's a referendum on their 80 years rule. They have to account for their stewardship to the people of Ghana who gave them the nod that this is what we have achieved and then give us the nod again. It is not an opposition party like MPP who has left power for 80 years that you are coming to castigate. That's unfair. So that was a campaign chairman for the opposition New Patriotic Party, Peter McMeno, in an interaction there with journalists. But let's still stay with issues relating to elections. And the Electoral Commission is today expected to submit to the Supreme Court the list of persons who registered onto the country's electoral roll with NHIS cards. Now this follows an order by the, uh, the Apex Court for the country's electoral body to provide it with a list of these persons, as well as a clear roadmap on how to clean the existing register let's try and understand what this means exactly and uh, joining me now in studio to help with that is joining us is uh, raymond Dakwa. raymond so let's start off with this but before obviously we talk about this uh what is to happen today let's let's take a look at the journey so far i mean how did we get to this point okay so dating back the whole talk started two years ago when the new patriotic party first submitted what they called irregularities a consistent inconsistent with the electoral register one of the issues he raised big time was that between 2011 and 2012 there were massive registration exercises carried out in certain parts of the country giving nhis people people cards to register and be on the voters register up until that particular time nhis the card was one of the requirements for people to actually register so you need a passport you need an nhis card you also if you had what they call it the driver's license you could use it the passport was also acceptable then the previous voters register the first registration that was done in 2012 accepted these cards post that particular time the mpp says that there is a problem with the numbers people were deliberately registered with these cards and forced to go and register so some who are even non-Ghanaians 
were asked to use that particular system. Mm -hmm. So it was a talk. The EC formed the committee. The committee then moved on to have the big two-day discussion on what to do with the voters register. Mm -hmm. The conclusion on that particular matter was that, okay, we cannot now go for a new register. That's according to the committee and the EC's own paper, white paper on that particular committee's report. Fast forward to the time where Abu Ramadan then took up the case to court. He went to the Supreme Court saying that this NHIS card doesn't have a nationality bit to it. Before it can register, it should be a Ghanaian first. And that the NHI is open to all nationals who are living in Ghana. So the only requirement is residency and not necessarily your nationality. nationality. Right. So they moved on to say that this then makes an invalid registration proof for you to be on the voters' roll. Mm -hmm. Already, some had used it to register. So what do you do to them? The court then ruled, it is true, we uphold the argument that indeed the NHIS card cannot and should not be used as a valid registration card for people to get on the electoral roll. So we have removed that. Now, the other issue that required interpretation of a sort was what happens to the people who registered previously. The court was quiet on that because we know a system that we have in this country that it can make a law retroactively taking effect when the people at the time they registered there was no law buying them for registering. At the time, it was perfectly legal. Very good. Mm. So then the next action required movement from this particular court and directives on what to do with the people like that. So Abu Ramadan and Nivas Nimako went to court again. This time around, their demand was simple. Please, make sure you say that the people who register with the NHIS card, there are many on the voters' register. So it makes the particular voters' register invalid, unconstitutional, and that should be thrown off. Two, give an order saying that the people who registered with the NHIS card should be removed because they are not worthy of being on that particular register. Mm -hmm. And three, tell the, tell the Electoral Commission, by, by not having a credible register, it should compile a new one. The court actually dismissed some of the claims that was required. But the court held that it does not make the presence of these people who registered on the NHIS card does not make the current register not sufficiently clean enough mm -hmm. for any election. So moving forward... The court then said, delete the people who registered with this National Health Insurance card and give them the opportunity if they have an alternative card. Because of the retroactive thinking, I can't have a law that will go and bite people who were functioning within the laws then. So give those who have the right, what they call it, um, ID to show their Ghanaians to actually now register and be on the, on, on the voters' mm -hmm. register. This is what the Supreme Court told the EC then okay. on May 5th. The EC said its understanding was that prepare and let people be removed through an exhibition exercise. So when you're which about to do an exhibition, doing. which was actually already mm, doing, mm. so use our processes already existing to remove the people. Beyond using the process already existing, you should not touch anybody who is currently on the roll. Unless the person comes to say that I registered with an NHIS card and now I don't have a card. So you have to be taken off. Okay. So that was the difference. But when Abu Ramadan went back to court, in fact, the court did not even look at the reliefs he sought this time out. He just told the EC in the face that we told you to do specific things. You are failing to do that particular thing. Now, what you need to do to us, because the EC has said before in court that, one, it did not have immediately the number of people that registered with NHIS. Yeah. But before that declaration, in the first case of Abu Ramadan, on the state of NHIS cars registrants, the attorney general who in part represented government and also the EC said majority of the people on the current electoral rule registered with the NHIS card. So any attempt to attach that particular part will be rendering the entire register useless. That was the argument. So the EC now said doesn't know the number. It also told the Supreme Court that, but looking at Form 1A, it can identify those who registered with the NHIS card and produce the list. Today, the EC has to submit documents to the, electoral, uh, to the Supreme Court detailing the number of people who registered specifically with the National Health Insurance Card. Mm. That is what it has to do today. Okay. Okay. So, uh, w what is going to happen? They're going to submit these names where? Ordinarily, if the, electoral comes, if the Supreme Court asks you to do a submission of some of this list, you take it to the registry. The registry yeah. will take account of it and inform the judges accordingly that by this time on, on this day, you did fulfill your directive to do this and that. Okay. Then when they give it to them, tomorrow, the court will have to look at the directives you have to give to the EC. The court may say, this number of people that you've given to us, remove them immediately. Or this number of people that you have given to us, 
call them to come and actually produce evidence that they are Ghanaians. If they do not do so, then you remove, remove them. them. So it is up to the court to determine that particular path. Indeed, the court also gave a second directive to the electoral commission. It said, it is possible that you may also have a plan in place. Come and tell us how you will remove these people and give them opportunity to register. Mm -hmm. That is part of the, that is B on the list of requirements that the Supreme Court is asking the Electoral Commission to provide today. Okay, so do we know when exactly the Supreme Court might be sitting on this issue again? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Exactly tomorrow at 10 a.m., okay. the court will review exactly what the EC has brought and give subsequent orders. Okay. Raymond, many thanks for that update. And uh, that was a uh, joining reporter, Raymond Nakwa, who joined us in the studio to help us understand the journey so far. How come we have arrived at this particular point and what to expect going forward as far as the country's electoral register is concerned you're watching news desk here on the joining this channel on multi tv we're taking a break we'll be back shortly with some more because we do know that the president is in the ashanti region on a three-day tour of that region while well, it forms part of his accounting to the people tour interestingly though yesterday information we are picking suggests that uh, the president's convoy uh, was pelted at quite a number of people pelted stones at the convoy we'll bring you details of those stories plus a lot more right after these messages stay with us